Okay, it's Wednesday, April 20th at 6 p.m. This is the Economic De Development Commission um, monthly meeting. In attendance tonight is Michael McMahon. Serena Fuller. Craig Samuelson. And um, Amber is not with us tonight. So we'll start out with public comments. If there's any member of the public that wants to say anything. Yes? Inga Hoteling, 45 Klein Road. I wanted to know, because I recently went to a planning board meeting last week, and they had, and I'm glad I went, they had a informal presentation from Blue Rhino, mm -hmm. and it was quite extensive, and I was able to ask a variety of questions to them regarding safety and a variety of other things. Um, but I wanted to know, how does the Economic Development Committee or Commission feel about potentially, because they haven't even filed an application yet, um, how do you feel about Blue Rhino looking about acquiring the piece of property on 202 and Tannery, that quadrant there that's for sale for 90 acres? Well, we haven't seen any plans. I listened to the, the Zoom meeting yesterday afternoon, the tape of it. So that's the first time I got any information on what Blue Rhino was considering building, and you don't really have much in the way of detail. Because I know the, the planning board, when they actually have an application, will be looking at the truck traffic. Oh, yes, yes. All the large that. trucks, the small delivery trucks, that I think that one of the people called them like beverage trucks, like mm -hmm. they were delivering Coke or Pepsi. So until you've got enough information, it's, it's hard really to have a position. So you folks weren't notified about we're, we're never notified. No, the meeting? No, we weren't. We're, we're never notified. Okay. Because that was, in my opinion, um, extremely informational. Well, they spent... Because it was Blue Rhino. We were able they they to spent at least them. 30 minutes of it talking about their safety process and mm -hmm. they have yeah, annual reviews and mm -hmm. whatever else they go... I thought that was important, but I wanted to know more about, well, how much of the space is going to be taken up, how many full-time employees, well, what's the pay scale all like, or what's the economic impact of your they, weekly or monthly payroll. They didn't get into specific. any details on We were able to get some of those details. I asked a lot of questions, and mm -hmm. they're looking at 25 acres. The, right. They're going to purchase the full 90 and they don't know what they're going to do with the rest of the land. And they're looking at approximately, on peak seasons, approximately 50 to 70 employees that are full-time. And that's going to be for a two-shift operation four days a week, but with trucks going in and out seven days a week. Yeah, they so. talked about production being two 10-hour shifts four days a week, right. like Monday through Thursday. Right. And... 50, they, according to their PowerPoint presentation, 50 employees would be year-round employees and probably another 25. And their season seems to be April or May until like September or whatever, mm -hmm. when people are doing grilling and Camping other all type, of, yeah, right. type of events. Okay. I just assume that you all would have been part of that process. I, I had another okay. meeting I, I was at. Okay last Tuesday night because I'm on the Library Board of Trustees and we have our monthly meeting. So I had to be there. Okay. So I, I couldn't. That's why I watched the, the Zoom tape of it yesterday. So as a commission at this point, you don't have a, an opinion on that proposed application? It, it's hard to have an okay. opinion when you've seen the nothing. I've heard of it, yeah, actually. Had you Is heard it, of it? Yeah, you'd heard of it, yeah. I yeah. read some in the paper, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're they're looking at approximately. This will be their largest facility, and it's going to be 4.2 million canisters at that location, and approximately rough math was that that, that that's per year, I believe. Um, it sounds I like think. It was I'm, I'm on not a, sure on a daily basis. Oh, is it? I, it's I, going to be a very large distribution center and a refurbication center, and 
a rough guesstimate from one of the people in operations at Blue Rhino was approximately 180,000 gallons of propane per time mm -hmm. at that facility right. as well. On, on the grounds, in other words. So what is that zoned up there? It's IR. In industrial restricted. It is, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, that that's why the previous proposal and the proposal before that was talking about warehousing or talking about that kind of stuff. It's not residential, so it's not like 200 right. townhouses or 150 single-family houses or anything. It's not residential at all. Okay, so since you don't have uh, uh, an opinion on that, I also wanted to know uh, with the proposal that's going, it's going to be on our town hall um, meeting as a warrant, uh, how do you feel about the major development bylaw that has been voted for through the planning board that's going to be on the town meetings um, for public vote on the 17th? There's been so many different versions of that. I was on it a couple of weeks ago and I saw one version. I was on it this afternoon and there was a different version dated April 14th or something. So I, I'm assuming the April 14th must have been the final one. I'm guessing. I, I don't know. Yeah, there's one that's recently been, the one that is now going to warrant was dated April 1st. Oh, again, as I say, I, the previous ones were in March, and then what I what's on the town website this afternoon is dated April fourteenth. So I I glanced through that. I didn't print it out. Okay. Because it's I think it, sixteen or twenty pages or something. We got it down to nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this has to do with what the um, moratorium on certain size. Um, divisions going into town. Well, more about, and, and a lot of this came from what we experienced last summer, was, well, we need to, if because the town public obviously wants the town to remain a certain rural aspect to it. And at the, in the bylaws, they don't have any defined caps. So... Um, we thought it might be great to be able to bring to the planning board an opportunity to really be able to define how does we, Southwick, want to grow? And what kind of businesses do we want to attract? And what are the size of those businesses and how could it impact the community as a whole? So it's more about the major development process. Mm -hmm. So. When an applicant, say, Blue Rhino, wants to come into Southwick, perfect point, uh, per perfect example, they haven't even put through the application yet. But if this was voted for, what they would have to do is they would, whoever the builder was, has to identify who the tenant is going to be, right from the get-go. And they're going to have to do the impact studies initially as well. Once they've conducted all of those components, then they are going to host a community meeting and actually be there as the facilitators. And then we as the community get to go and listen to their presentation prior to them even putting through the application. But see, one of the, the difficulties from what I saw on this Blue Rhino thing they're talking about a building of 25,000 square feet. That wouldn't be impacted by this whatsoever. No, but... Right. I, that's, that's what I mean. It wouldn't be a major... No, it wouldn't be a major uh, development. Under this bylaw. But with this being put into play, because they're going to own that whole parcel mm -hmm. of 90 acres, there they would have to be able to define what are they planning on doing with the other... But if they don't have any plans... It wouldn't be covered by this. So then that would be possibly an opportunity for the town of Southwick to say, you know, we're not interested in the application because you're not able to give us the information that we need. Yeah, I, I right. don't know. Right. It's the same thing as what I was reading this afternoon, the updated version of this bylaw. It refers back to this other handbook, and the only version I can find of that handbook 
is March 24th. I don't know if that's been updated or if that stayed the same. You can't tell from the town website. And it, it that's going to be a lot of explaining at the town meeting as to what's in there. And people are going to see this thing cold for the first time, looking at it a 10 page document or in a six or eight or 10 page handbook, that's a lot to absorb all at once. It, it is, that's where possibly we might be looking at a way to educate people ahead of that. So what, what triggers this? What's the threshold that triggers the requirement here in the warrant? Um, the, the threshold that we're looking at, and I wanna make sure I'm not going to misrepresent that. I think it was, they were talking, starting with the 60,000 square feet and then all sorts of other 60, parameters. 000, I know because we've had a few versions, it's 60,000 square feet. Building? Of more of gross floor area. And also, um, depending on the, the type of property, um, then also construction of a hundred or more net additional parking spaces. So it's going to be an encapsulation of both the building and the superbious surface surrounding the building. But I mean, why is it, why would you, you just tie it into a, a structure? I mean, because not that we're Kentucky where you're going to have a bunch of, you know, lifts, uh, hoisting vehicles up and working on vehicles outside but you could approach something like that right with any kind of well with certain kinds of business so why is it just the uh, threshold of a structure the size of a structure why wouldn't we be looking at something that is more encompassing as far as something we may not want I mean it's as you know. the industry itself specifically? Yeah, exactly. Well, I shouldn't it's, I shouldn't Yeah, that's that's a hard you know, that's well, yeah, discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying like with Blue Rhino, I mean that, that that's a big impact, right? Sure is. I mean and it's a small building. That so there's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. So it seems like there ought to be a different way to define uh, the threshold as opposed to sixty thousand square foot building. Right. Well what we did is we looked at the large buildings in Southwick, what encompasses Southwick. I'm sorry, I don't know how to silence this little block. It's, oh, that's second. okay. <laughs> you don't have a little tab in your day timer about how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> what we did is we looked at the largest <clears throat> buildings in Southwick, mm -hmm. and we came up with an average to be a trigger. Hmm. And what I can do, Craig, if you want, is I can send you directly what it was that went through for the final proposal that was voted on through the planning board, mm. and that's what's going to be on the warrant. Oh, I see. No, I, don't, I just, I'm just trying to, I'm looking at the impact that something like a Blue Rhino might, would have, and yet they have a very small building, so I'm just trying to understand. Unfortunately, that wouldn't fall under this category, because right. we're looking at size space right unfortunately that's another whole subject altogether is would do we as the town want to have that type of an industry on the corner of tannery and college highway and Un un unfortunately one of the things at least from the questions that people are asking some of the people asking questions were very ill-informed they thought we have a volunteer fire department with no people. We have paid staff, we've got three engine trucks, we've got a ladder truck, multiple ambulances and rescue vehicles. These people asking these questions, I don't think understood that. Because they said, when you think of a volunteer fire department, the alarm goes off, be it by radio or telephone or whatever, people rush to the firehouse, get the fire truck, and drive there. We've got paid staff sitting in the firehouse. Right, we do have a partially staffed fire department. And the volunteers are paid. Right. They, they're not volunteers. Oh, they're paid? They're yeah. paid for every fire they show up at. Right, they're just not sitting in the firehouse 24-7. Right. But th that, that's on top of the, mm. the 10 or 12 
paid full-time staff that are sitting in the firehouse. And I think that also is just part of the community might not be aware. Exactly well, that, that, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're, right. I'm not saying right. they're doing anything wrong. They're ill-informed. They don't know. <clears throat> they're thinking of the fire department 20 or 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. They're not aware of what the town has today. So I, I still go back to this because, I mean, I'm not sure what the Blue Runner operation is all about. This is the first I've heard of it, but I could imagine that there could be a, it could be very unsightly, you know, it could be like a, an Amerigas up there on uh, Correct. Lockhouse Road or something like that on a very, very, very large scale, a very, mm -hmm. very ugly operation, right? Mm -hmm. Even though they only have a 25,000 square foot building, and so by virtue of this, you're not allowed to say right. anything about whether or not they could come right. in. So it, it just seems that there ought to be more of a caveat in there that... Um, and then they could, could expand too, not to. Well, not right, because they have the they'll have the full ninety. Right, but then if you it. want to expand, you've got to go back to the planning board to build anything else. Right, but when they own the land, they own the land. Yeah. I I understand, Mike. It's it's like a catch twenty two system. Griffin has owned the land since nineteen forty two. Right, but they can't unless they want to grow tobacco or corn on it. Right. If they want to build anything, they've got to come to the planning board. Mm -hmm. But if the goal of this is to try to control, you know, the um, the theme of the town here, then it doesn't seem like a square footage of a building is the only thing right. to be looked at. I mean, right? you could want right. to put a racetrack here, you know what I mean? Or yeah. something mm -hmm. like that that doesn't right. have a building per se. Right. We, it has right now soft caps to it. Um, because we weren't able to get the planning board to agree to put a cap on the size of the building. There wasn't going to be a unanimous um, mm. agreement for that. So it's at least we're getting the start of them allowing the community to hear before the application is even submitted for a major development. Mm -hmm. well, and, and that's the definition of the triggers of the 60,000 mm. as to here's who the applicant is community has an opportunity to sit in front of them and ask them questions, which we've never been able to do before. No, I understand. I, I, so I, that's the first start progress, of this. But, I mean, there could be an open-air thing that, that really wouldn't fit well in the town, and if we oh, don't... I agree. A giant yeah, flea market. Saying. I was I thinking agree. a flea market, a racetrack, anything. Yeah. I agree. Um, I would have loved to have seen Griffin accept Mr. Wally's offer <laughs> to buy the land and farm it. How, how now, much was he willing to pay? Um, he offered a fair price. How much did he offer? I'm not going to express how much he offered. Was he offering? It was fair. What was he? Farming. What was he offering? The market rate. It was a fair offer. That that's all I can say. Because he wants, the, he would want the land to continue the farming from across the street, um, and it, just it, preserve it, it, the town didn't accept it. No. Griffin Land was being paid $5.3 million, like according to public information mm -hmm. on the Internet, which is the going rate. was $38,000, $39,000 per acre. That's how much industrial land sells for in New England. I don't, no idea so what it sells for in Mississippi it. or Missouri or anything oh, else. Grounds. But it's just when, when people talk about, oh, we'll just take up a GoFundMe and we'll buy it. Who's got $5.3 million? I don't. I I don't know, you know, unless it's some someone who's going to be productive with the property, mm -hmm. it's going to be income producing. Right. They can't they can't spend that kind of money. But again, that's that's up to Griffin Land and whoever it is that mm. might buy the property. That's up to them. So I'm just trying to understand the lay of the land here where I would have assumed that you all would have known about that informal no. We explained that over the last two years to Ms. Dale and the other people that have come to these meetings that we get no information provided to us by anyone. How can we change that? The, the planning board doesn't share information. 
with the Conservation Commission. They don't share information with the Zoning Board of Appeals. If someone has an application before conservation, if they have to get their approval, then they've got to submit an application to conservation. If they're trying to get a waiver of the town bylaws, they've got to go to the Board of Appeals, submit an application to them, and whatever the Board of Appeals needs to make a decision in their case. We are not, as I explained out here, when we had the 30 or 40 people or whatever the number was in a meeting last year, we are not a regulatory board of any sort. We don't approve or disapprove of anything. We have no money from the town or from anywhere else to give to a supermarket chain or to give to a department store or to give to someone to come to Southwick. We don't have 50000 to give to Whole Foods or to mm -hmm. wherever. Saying, mm -hmm. We have nothing. But so, that we, so we don't approve anyone moving to town. If you want to use a lot of water, then you've got to deal with the Water Commission. Correct. If you're within 100 feet of a lake or a river or wetlands, then you've got to deal with conservation and they have to sign off. When the two selectmen stopped in last time, last meeting, did we ask them what our purpose was, what they'd like to mm -hmm. see out of us? Didn't we? And I, I you know, I, I don't Did you remember. get an answer? I don't remember what the answer was. It was none. Okay. No, no answer. Okay. So, you know what, I, um, a long time ago, I really thought it was, well, I do a lot of work in Westfield. And what's really nice is when you have a project, you go in and there's a round table, there's a fire chief there, there's every board has a representation around that round right. table and they talk about the project, you know. So I wish that we had something like that and, you know, the whole, our whole board wouldn't have to sit on, but at least one member would, and then bring it back to the rest of them. So that would be very helpful if we had something like that. But The uh, closest I have ever seen of that in Southwick is not last year's project, but the project two or three years before that, the wanted to build the 788,000 square foot warehouse. That was held in the Selectman's Conference Room and there are 23 or 24 people in the room from every board and committee, every department in town, and some people from the state. That's the only time I've ever seen that occur in Southwick in the 20 years I've been in town. And what triggered that, do you remember? Um, they were looking at Southwick and another community to build this large warehouse in. But why did they have the input from everybody mm. back then? They had everybody there when they finally announced what it was. It was being worked on mm -hmm. behind closed doors by one selectman, not two or more, mm -hmm. there was only one. The rest of us had no idea why we were going to this meeting. You walked in, and, yeah. and they had a development company doing the work, and they said, and the client the, or the tenant for the building would be Mr. So-and-so and his corporation, and then two or three of the other people who had flown up here from Tennessee or Missouri or whatever state they were from. That's where this bylaw is going to be instrumental to eliminate that from ever occurring. As I said, that's the only time right, I've, I've been aware of it. Right, because this is going to require the applicant, prior to even putting through the application, to do the due diligence, do the, mm -hmm. the studies that are necessary, and then present it to the public with the tenant so that we're not doing what happened last summer. Mm-hmm. And this has to be voted on at This is going meeting? to be a vote at the town meeting. Um, we are looking at how we're going to educate the community prior to that, too, so that they're aware of it. That's where, if any of you would want a copy of what was approved at the planning board, I'll gladly send it to you electronically. Mm -hmm. I just need your email addresses. It just The only thing I, I ask is be honest and straightforward. No projections, no guesstimates, only facts. Correct. That, that's, you know, because with that project, there were so many half-truths, 
myths and all sorts of stuff presented as fact. Many of those things showed up on Channel 22 or on Channel 40. They showed up in the Westfield News as facts, and they weren't. What project was that? The Carvana. Carvana. Oh. So many different things. Yeah. So you couldn't even get answers to, to the actual project. Mm -hmm. You got all these mystery things of <clears throat> how good it is to buy a car from the company. That's irrelevant. Exactly. It has nothing to do with zoning. Yeah, and it's relevant whether or not they're going to pay for a stoplight down there. Right? right. That's relevant. That's the question I ask. Do you think that's relevant? I, yeah. I, I don't. But I don't think it is. I don't think it's relevant whether or not they're going to be tax-free for a year or something like that. I don't think those matter. It, well, I, I, I wanted to know there were going to be road improvements on Tannery Road and the traffic light. The question I asked in the public meeting in the auditorium was, what percentage of the cost of the road improvements in the traffic light will the applicant pay for? But I never got an answer on that, but that was the only question. Right. But Michael, let's say they're going to pay for everything. If they're going to destroy the town and oh no, this. no, I I understand that. <laughs> but a, a basic question. I yeah. wish we did have the ability, Craig, to be able to say when somebody knocks on the door. Yeah. Before they even put their neck, sorry, that's really not fitting to what we want in our community. Yeah. But that's really what Thank we should you, be but thinking. No yeah. That's exactly. I would love to be able to see somebody have the. Um, the authority? The authority, but also be proud and want to say to the public, they approached us, we said no. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same thing if you go back, and this goes back six or eight years ago, or whenever marijuana became legal. The town, in terms of a production facility, the way the town bylaws are written now, and it was after the state made marijuana legal, you can only produce marijuana and process it and all in land that's zoned industrial restricted. You can't do it in a residential neighborhood. You can't do it in a commercial neighborhood. You can't have it on, you know, in the middle of College Highway mm -hmm. next to the church. You've got to have it off an industrial area. But then they had another vote, should we even have it at all in town? Mm -hmm. And it didn't pass. So I don't know how you get, you know, to go back to what you ask as far as our involvement in this stuff. I don't know how you make us relevant. You know, we're here, we just try to carve out our own little existence and we try to, um, we, we used to have a, a much larger role. We had more members and so forth. And um, we used to have, uh, on the days of Fred Hanks, Fred Hanks and yeah. all, you know, we used to, Fred was very helpful. You know, I mean, he would go on out and he would, he, he was involved with the, the company, contacts. involved with construction. Yeah. So he knew six months before the application that this was coming. <laughs> yeah. Because the company he worked for may have been... Got pinged, right. Right. Mm -hmm. May have been digging up the site mm -hmm. to make it re ready to build on. But, but this is a whole new thing that we're looking at right now because I, even those companies back then, I think that they were small enough and they... Right. It wasn't that they were just looking at the sixteen dollar ninety eight cent tax right. issue. Right. I think that's some of these companies right now. That's all they're looking at. They could give a rat's hind end less about this town and and the right. people and all. And I think that's what's un uh, unfortunate is that we have that incentive that's drawing them in, and that's all they care about. Uh, and those are my words. I mean, I don't know mm -hmm. if that's true or not, but um, well, I think that's enticing. It is enticing and. I don't think you'll see that going away. That's why we do need some checks and balances. Well, that was one of the questions that was asked at the planning board meeting, the last one. I asked why you why, why you're looking why. at Southwick? Right. And they looked. They wanted a chunk of land. They didn't want to have it in the middle of Springfield because they could never get but it. But they do have a distribution center in Springfield on Page Boulevard. Distribution is different than what you're talking about here. This one here is distribution plus refurbishing. Right. This is the whole the thing. The, really? From what the company said, they, yeah, but driving the trucks out from somewhere in Springfield is different than this, this size complex. operation. Oh, absolutely. Because they said they have nothing in New England or New York State 
they don't operate anything that does this. The stuff's got to come from Ohio or Indiana or they use some of, he said some of their competitors to reach parts of Maine and other some other parts of New England, but they want to do it in-house uh -huh. so they don't have a facility. Right. And they also said that they feel that they are more community focused because they like to be involved with the communities. And since our town is small, they could bring that same warm and fuzzy approach into the community. Well, they, 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 they thought do. their customer base was in smaller towns. And I can think of at least three of their cages here in Southwick where you mm -hmm. buy one of the containers. There's one at the dollar store. Yeah, tractor There's supply maybe. Tractor, I think. Yeah, Tractor Supply, I believe, has one. And There's one, one at Walgreens. It's got the case oh, there is? The, oh. the $20 or $25 canister you take with you. It's full of, of propane. So are they refurbishing these canisters? They are, too. Yeah. So they're going to they're sandblast paint and paint? And sandblast, uh, paint. Inside the facility they're, or outside? They're going to have a separate paint room for that. And then they're going to be also removing the nozzles, inspecting those. And then refilling the canisters. Refilling the canisters. And the last four explosions that were not related to Blue Rhino, uh, there was two in 22, two in 21 from the research I've been able to ascertain, and they were all explosions due to human error. But it had nothing to do with this company. No. Nope. Last one for Blue Rhino was nine years ago in Florida. Massive, Anybody get hurt? Massive uh -huh. explosion. So when they paint, though, you still have, you, uh, it, it's not zero emissions, is it? Um, they said that they're very clean. Yeah, it's not zero emissions. They, so that stuff does travel. It does, you know, you would smell it. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm So, and obviously this is just an initial conversation. Yeah. No application's been submitted. But when I'm looking at um, the Economic Development Commission, and the planning board, I would think that you would all would be talking about who they are talking to to understand the impact of the community. So that's why I wanted to know what your thoughts were. On yeah, the, as I say, right. since we have almost no information. No information. So it's would it behoove someone in the public uh, to at the next select board meeting to raise um, his or her hand and ask, about how there can be better communication within the department. The, 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 the reality is for the last 16 or 18 that. years, I've gone to at least 75% of the planning board meetings at least once a month. I typically visit during the day and talk to whoever the town planner is. I've, I've now talked, this is the third town planner since I've been here. Yes. They've gone through. Yes, they have. Somebody has been here for four, five, six years, ten years. Someone else is that. So to find out what's, what's happening. Right. Because the business model that they have in Westfield and other towns that I'm aware of, it's extremely effective. I mean, you're all sitting around mm. the same table talk, or but a the representative. Thing is, but a place like Westfield has paid staff. I understand. We're that. all volunteers. Right. And... We don't have support staff. We don't even have a computer. We've got nothing. We've got a table that we can use, and we use this table like other boards. The sewer implementation committee meets here. Historical the historical commission system. meets yeah. here. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have no staff. We have, so we've been doing it informally, going to the planning board meetings, meeting with the town planner to find out what's hot or what's going on. But we have asked to for a long time that this master plan be done because then we have some benchmark that we can track to, you know, mm -hmm. other than just having our own opinions, we can at least say, you know what, it really doesn't fit well with our master right. plan. Right. The and town are, approved right. the master plan, here it is. And they are going to be putting out an extensive survey to the public by the end of May asking questions too, which is going to help mm -hmm. guide mm -hmm what it is going to help support this significantly yeah. uh -huh. so we could have opinions about whether or not we feel something fits you know she might differ from me or whatever but that's not very helpful but if we had a document that we could all say you know what this really doesn't fit here and this is the approved document yeah. let's right. work from there right which we used to have did 
the well, town, yeah. the last approved one was, was it back in 67 or 68 or something. Yeah. There was one in the late 90s or early 2000 that never got never approved got, yeah. because you had different people on the planning board and unless you were a friend or relative, mm. you should probably go through the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we don't have that anymore. At least I haven't, I haven't seen it. But there hasn't been an underlying document to work from. And my concern is with now the new master plan committee and the efforts that they're going to go through, will that disappear like the last one did in the and late it, 90s? It depends if the planning board approves it. Right. So that's where I'm trying to get my arms wrapped around who, because I feel that we're right now in our community, we're at a crossroads. Mm -hmm. And there's land for sale on in this town that's being advertised on the Wall Street Journal. So we're looking to bring people in. I want to figure out who's looking. Mm -hmm. Well, part of the, and it's through the master plan process, it's not 10 or 20 or 100 people who make the decision for the 9,000. It should be everyone ultimately should have some input. That's why Correct. whatever the survey is going to be. It's my understanding that the process will include some open meetings Correct. where things are presented and people can provide, ask questions and provide that's input. That's the whole thing, communication. Right. right. That's, oh, yeah. that's all I'm hoping to, to, you know, to, to get to right. through the process. Right. So hopefully... Once that process is completed, as Craig says, ultimately a document that people can work from. That helps everybody. It helps the business community. Mm -hmm. It helps the residents in town. It helps any potential developer of, okay, what is this community looking for? If you were a developer from Ohio or from Fort Worth and you're looking at Southwick and it, as well as a number of other places, you wouldn't try to build anything large or ugly in Sturbridge, Mass, mm. because they would say you can't use plastic, it's got to be a little wooden sign. You wouldn't try that in Simsbury, Connecticut, because you wouldn't get for it far. No, or from where I'm from, the Berkshires. Right. It just doesn't, well, it won't fly. Right. But since we've had, for more, more than 50 years, we've had nothing. To guide anyone, well, and people have begged for it for the last eight or ten years, and it wasn't listened to. Okay. So hopefully, that will come through. Move now. Moving on to old business changes and business developments in town. I've updated the overview of Southwick with our. Tax rate, our population, median household income, etc. Nice. I've made copies. This will be at the art show. Okay. There will be a table over to the side. I don't know exactly where. That the public can then get some information mm -hmm. about Southwick. I've updated the eating and drinking establishments in town. And just, I think it was last week, the former Walk on Water, formerly oh, yes, known became as... Life became something. Lake Life 101. <laughs> and the 101 is because that's the physical address. I asked Jen yesterday, where did the name come from? I, th I thought it was <laughs> like a basic college course. No, yeah, that's I, what I thought too. And she said, no, it's the physical address. Because I tried typing in name. to confirm <laughs> web addresses. <laughs> LakeLife.com lake won't work. You get nowhere. Put in lakelife101.com, and there it is. So I just I made sure I had the right okay. web address. And now I printed like 100 of these. will be at the art show Saturday and Sunday. The cultural council's running the art show here mm -hmm. on Saturday and Sunday. Some other news items that are occurring in town. The last five or six weeks have been kind of tough on residents. The owner of Meadowview Farm yes, died. Yeah. The owner of Mrs. Murphy's yeah. has died. Mm -hmm. 
And the own the owner, Mr. Prifty, Mr. Prifty has died. died. Good friend of mine, yep. Did so he? Don Prifty. He did? Yeah, yeah he died ago. about two weeks ago. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. yeah. So in, in terms of economic development, question comes up, well, will Murph, Mrs. Murphy stay in business or will it get sold off and then God knows what will go in there? Prifty's. I think it's a chunk sold. right in the, yeah. the core part of town. I don't know what will happen to the property. Mm -hmm. And Meadowview Farms is God knows how many acres. Mm -hmm. I know. And that in season, in spring with flowers and in the fall, brought an awful lot of business from Connecticut because at least half the cars mm -hmm. had Connecticut oh, yeah. lights. Mm -hmm. That, In addition to providing employment to people from Jamaica, mm -hmm. Provided a lot of employment when they're selling flowers and their chrysanthemums, etc. Provided a lot of employment to Southwark residents who worked there part time just for the you know five, six, eight weeks, whatever. So again, you know, it'll take a while, but that may have some kind of an impact. Also, some good news: on April the sixth, the select board held a meeting to review. The proposed budget for FY23, they went through the budget request, and at least at that meeting, I don't, they had another meeting after that, which I didn't, wasn't able to get to, but at least on April 6th, they're approving our budget for $2,000. So, we'll see if it, we'll see if it makes it to the annual town meeting, but as of April 6th, I'll vote it in. <laughs> but I find sometimes you have to sit there at the meeting, staring at them for two or three hours to get your money. Because I had to stare at them for the library budget since I'm a library trustee. And we got half a loaf, at least on April 6th. We got one of the things we wanted for the, the library. The other thing we were told, we're putting on a hold and we'll rethink about it. So I don't know if they rethought or not. <clears throat> But at least hmm. we got one of the things. But you have to sit there for hours and just stare at them, which I've been doing for 16 or 18 years. But that's, again, it's no guarantee. Correct. I mean, we went from the 1,200 to 600, right. but at least the direction we're going wow. in at the moment. Um, something that came up at the last selectman's meeting, <clears throat> and again, you don't see the documents that they're passing among themselves or approving. You're just sitting in the audience hearing it. So they were talking about the Alcohol Beverage Control Commission, as they call it, the ABCC, has extended the temporary rules for bars and restaurants in terms of operating in the parking lot right. or outside their buildings, etc. And they said, well, that's going through for another year. I don't know if businesses can then immediately proceed or if they've got to talk to the building inspector or the, the health board or I, I don't know. Yeah, they actually funneled that to the planning board meeting too right afterwards the next um, the next day that they might have to review their parking spaces yeah, I saw that, and yeah. the capabilities mm -hmm. of being right. able to how it's been zoned. So I searched the ABCC and found the memo <laughs> that the ABCC had put out. Because again, for the public, you don't even you don't know what the document is. You have to go right. find it on your own. But at least, if you listen very carefully, you hear that there is a document. So then, thank goodness we've got the the internet, so you can go find the document. So what's being extended? Just the extend for for another year that they can have their tents or whatever in the parking the COVID, lot. Uh, for right. bars and restaurants, uh, if people have a liquor license, bars, they can continue to sell um, to go liquor to go to, liquor to go, which normally in mass under Massachusetts law would be illegal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but they okay. can continue that. Right. You know, so that will help. You know, some of the businesses. On a related topic to everything we've talked about tonight. The Hartford Business Journal, and if you want to see a copy, you probably find a library in Connecticut, maybe Simsbury or maybe Granby or East Granby or somewhere. They had an article 
on warehouse logistics development boom could see broader resistance. And the article was talking about the fact that in Windsor, South Windsor, Windsor Locks, etc., they have all sorts of warehouses for Amazon, for Domino's, for Tire Rack, all these different companies. But now some of these towns are beginning to say, wait a second, can we have a six-month or one-year moratorium on new applications for warehouses so that the town can look and think about what do we want? Right. Do we want any more of these warehouses? Right. Are they giving us as much economic impact in real estate tax, jobs, etc., as we thought they might, because some of these towns between Hartford and Bradley have had a lot of these warehouses for the last eight or ten years, so they're beginning to say, how many more do we want within the town limits? <clears throat> so some of these towns are beginning to bring up these moratorium-type issues. I don't know if they'll get passed or what their process is, because so some what? Connecticut law is different than, than in Massachusetts. But that issue is, is coming up more. So it's ironic. I mean, if you were to read between the lines, if it was such a good thing, they wouldn't be having a concern, would they? It depends. There were, there were people last year here in town at one of the meetings, for example, who was held at the high school talking about Carvana. And after the meeting, I was talking to one man who said, in effect, I don't care if you create 400 or 800 jobs. They're not good enough jobs. I said, more than 60% of the residents of Southwick don't have a bachelor's degree or above. They need mm -hmm. jobs that pay 15 or 20 bucks an hour. Where are they? Where are those people right now? Yeah, I'd like to know I, where they are too. I'm just saying, if you look at the data, he said, we don't want those kind of jobs. Those jobs should be in Westfield or in Angawam. We don't want them here. We want, he's talking about, we want doctors and we want lawyers in town. Well, then you want to live in a six or $800,000 house. You don't want a $200,000 house. So he was being very exclusive in terms of who should live in town. I didn't argue with him. Now you hear those kind of comments. Other people just don't want anything new in town. They say, I'm already here. Maybe I moved here five years ago or 200 years ago. Lock the gates. Don't right. let anything else in. There's so a just, blend. There's mm -hmm. definitely a blend out there right now. But speaking to Craig's point, um, I do executive recruiting for a living. And I've been talking to even just two local clients today. They're, they don't even know how they're going to keep their doors open because they're not getting people coming in applying for those $15, $20 jobs. Right. Because now equity has pushed them up to twenty-five, thirty-dollar equity mm -hmm. jobs. So, it, it it's a challenge. Yeah, and they're C mm -hmm. stores. It's not a company. challenge. So, but the re the reality is, I could take an average person's budget, and I could squeeze three or four or five hundred dollars out of it every month. But they would yell and scream. They need the two or three hundred dollar cable bill. They have to pay eighty or a hundred dollars for their cell phone every month. These are their must haves. You sound like if money is very tight, or you're trying to pay, you're trying to save for your kids going to college or for your retirement, then maybe you need to cut back. There are people in this town, just as everywhere in the country who never buy a car. They pay $300 or $400 a month to lease a car for life. It's like, maybe keep a car five, six, seven years. It doesn't have to be replacing it every two or right. three years. But to them, that's a necessity. It's all about choice. Right. Yeah. So how many was Carvana going to employ? I can't remember what that number was. I believe it was 400. Roughly 400. Right. So where were those 400 people going to come from if I can't even get one person? To the whole, they were going to come from the area. Exactly. It was going to be from Agawam, it was going to be from West Springfield, right. it was going to be from Westfield. Might be 
Granby or East Granby or well. wherever the Windsors. You're operating in a in a market area with everyone else. Mm -hmm. If you were Bay State and you're trying to hire doctors, they're looking at the whole country and saying, "We'll give it." If you've got an MD, we'll pay you X number of hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you're generally dealing mm -hmm. with a local area. So then, how do we? I mean. In a, in a perfect world, if we were doing what we should be doing as Economic Development mm -hmm. Commission, how would we decide then what's good for our community here? Because is it good to just bring in from all around low-paying jobs when we don't really have the people and it's not going to support the town? Those people are going to come, they'll have a bag lunch, they're going to go home, they're going to increase well, traffic on the road, they're not going to buy anything. That, that, there, right? that, that's some, some of the of it. That's what some of the people said last year about Carvana. They're just going to drive by. They're not going to stop at Dunkin' Donuts or at Mrs. Murphy's or wherever. Or they're not going to stop at the convenience store at Christmas Plaza. Part of it's that all of southern New England, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island have the same problem that the lower half of New York State has and most of New Jersey has all the way down to northern Virginia. Our housing is unaffordable. If you're making $25 an hour and you're single, you couldn't afford car payments in this town unless you're able to find a house that was built in 1952 and it's a four-room cape. But if you want to fix it up, you couldn't afford the payments on it. So how should we think about that in terms of what we would recommend for that, business coming in this town? That, that's a good question, and that would be part of the master plan. Could you allow, because right now we don't allow almost any multifamily housing in town. We won't allow townhouses or two-family houses or whatever. If you're making the 20 or 25 bucks an hour, as I say, you can't make the mortgage payments. So but the average income in town is high. And with anything, there's people living on a twelve or fifteen hundred dollar social security check, and there's people living on four or five hundred thousand dollars a year. If you look at the street directory and you look at certain neighborhoods mm -hmm. and you look at the people at that at an individual address because it's broken down by house number. Doctor, 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 lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. Those people are making three or four hundred thousand. I have nothing against it. Great, so they can afford the five or six hundred thousand dollar house. But if they you've got a janitor working with someone who works at Ocean States, they're lucky if they're bringing in forty or fifty thousand dollars a year. They can't afford the big house. And those doctors and lawyers aren't working here either. Oh, no. They're working in Springfield right. or Hartford, whatever, but they're bringing right. the money home. And they By the way, this is a little off. The, I approached a, um, a doctor that I know that has a practice, and I mentioned this. So uh -huh. he's thinking about it. I had to get him some particulars, but I haven't uh -huh. heard back from him. Oh, But I reached out good. to him, and he... But it, they have like 20 rooms there. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's a good-sized facility. I yeah. would think that would be an ideal place for a PT yeah. office. Yeah. Physical yeah. Therapy. Well, I planted a seed anyway. Right. But anyway, that, that's so, good. Yeah. But, but but to that that point, I mean, yeah. So here we are, and uh, as Moglin mentioned last time, we don't have a doctor in the town. Yeah. We don't have a lawyer we don't either. Have a dry cleaner, and yet we can support these businesses that want to just. I don't want to say they want to contaminate the soil, but I, I, we, we're going to be upside down if we're not careful. So I guess so my question to you is, what do you think we ought to be doing as as a commission? What would you what, what do you think our job should be? I would think that you'd be working hand-in-hand -hand with the planning department and actually merge the two departments into one because the planning department is determining the growth of the town. And but they're, the they're, 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 not, they're, doing they're not going if, out. To if you're coming people. in submitting right. an application, they're not going then out. they're dealing right. with the application. No, but I believe it should, go, it should work in tandem. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. In a perfect world, because if I wanted to build a business in town, 
I would want to meet with the planning board and sit down with the Economic mm -hmm. Development Commission and probably the select board too, or the finance committee, to understand how am I going to be successful here. Actually, in a perfect world, the way many towns work, you would, this would be your first stop. That's what I would think because it's... That's why we've got this document giving them some information about recreation, business, demographics, quality of life. Uh, five or six years ago, a pharmacy opened up across the street. Mm -hmm. um, from the summer house? From the summer, from the summer house. house. Pharmacy, yeah. And the guy was interested. He was going to provide local delivery. He had the um, those little things were puts one pill in each little pop thing, you just pop out the mm -hmm. one pill. He was doing all that stuff. He was only here for a couple of years. He seemed to be affiliated with a, some kind of group out of Florida, but I don't know exactly what the affiliation was. And then all of a sudden he disappeared. You know, the business just shut down. So we just, we, we try to point out, we've got golf courses. If you're involved with mail service, it explains we have nearby postal service facilities. At P and D C, if you're in that industry, you'd know what that is. That's the North Meadows in Hartford. A national distribution center, if you're dealing with newspapers or magazines that go through the mail, that's in Springfield. So we're near all those kinds of facilities. It's the same thing as if you were involved and you needed stuff shipped. In West Springfield, they can take the 40-foot containers that have traveled on a train and right. they can take them off and put them on a truck. So we've got all those kind of facilities within 10 or 15 miles of us, those kind of things. If you need to fly, other than Bradley, which is important for most people, if you have small jets or whatever, Barnes. we've got barns. So are you using that tool to educate people that are coming to town, that live outside of town, and, to and anyone that's why to I'm, our town? I'm going to have some of these, as I say, at the art show. The last two years, we didn't have too much going on, but then I updated it with the latest census data mm -hmm. and median income, etc. So this is something we have. We gave it to the company that was from out of state, that was before Carvana, and one of the things that they found nice with eating and drinking facilities. Oh, you, you've got family restaurants and all, because I know these people were from the South, and they'd have an interest in that versus all franchise restaurants. And their nearest facility happened to be in West Virginia, and I knew that, I know that town in West Virginia a little bit. So I, I talked to them about that. I said, you're right by 81. Shoot straight up 81 to I-84 to 91, you're right up here. And the idea that Southwick could serve New England and upstate New York, which is what this company was doing, they ended up moving to upstate New York instead of to Southwick because the town gave them five or ten million bucks, the county gave them a few million, yeah. the industrial park authority or they built, gave them a few million, and Governor Cuomo yeah. gave them five or ten million. Because I, I, I've read the press releases on it since and tracked it. The place opened up about six months ago. But they got millions of dollars. Mm. The state of Massachusetts was giving them a one or two million dollar discount when they filed their corporate tax returns. They'd get a discount off but the town had no money. We couldn't say, we won't make you pay real estate tax for five or ten years, and we have no county government. The electric company is not the TVA or somebody, so Eversource was not about to say, we'll give you half price electric. So it just, we were competing with another place, but... It would be nice if you were going to start a business that you called the town, they said, you know, we have an economic development commission, mm -hmm. you need to meet with them, and that we would be used, you know, to march you through the process and to introduce you to the selectmen and, 
and the planning board mm -hmm. that would be a wonderful wonderful thing to have happen but it doesn't See, seem to it doesn't it's seem to showing you but whether these the companies just want to operate on their own uh, on this mass it, it should I don't know why it can't I mean it should I mean I, then we could be used I mean mm -hmm. and it'd be nice if we had like a fifty thousand dollar budget because there was a time when years ago I remember we way back when we did things I remember calling Central Tractor up and saying you know this would be a wonderful place for you guys to come they were out in Michigan at the time and um, they they came I think they came across Canada and then um, the, what do we have up here in Tractor Supply right. which is a sister company came you know uh, across the states so we approached them and they said well we're really not ready yet and then lo and behold all of a sudden a few years later we see him here we did the same thing, uh, my, my wife and I actually did this uh, with Central Tractor, and we did it with, it was Frank's Nursery, remember they were in Westfield? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so they were in Davidson, Michigan. We had called them on up, we said, we think it's a wonderful opportunity and so forth, and uh, they ended up coming to Westfield, not to Southwood. So we used to be active with things like that, you know, we didn't, it's not like we had, uh, it, it was phone calls, back then it cost to make long distance calls, Right. but um, that was the investment. But uh, it'd be wonderful if we had a budget of $30,000 or something like that where we could, you know, spend time and take people out to eat and, and uh, you know, schmooze them and so forth. Right, then you can be selective, too, of the, the types of businesses that exactly. you're soliciting. Exactly, that would be wonderful, you know. Um, but even <laughs> short of that, um, I, I think that if, if we could be recognized for what we should be recognized for, then it would go a lot further than just having a, a fair every year and... You know, nobody showing up and all of that. So that would be really meaningful. So, for example, this coming fiscal year, as of July 1st, we can finally go to Southwoods or similar and get this in color. This looks, this front cover looks beautiful in color. But if you're only using a black and white copier in town hall, <laughs> you can't do it. You can also use better quality paper. So we can begin to do some of that with our $2,000 budget, assuming it goes through this coming fiscal year that you couldn't do with $600. So we're, we're trying, you know, based on some of your comments at prior meetings, based on um, Ms. Gale's comments, we're trying. And hopefully with the master plan coming through and some of these other things, we'll be able to move forward a little bit. But part of it is, and I, I'm, I'm looking, like with the master plan committee, I'm gonna ask them for their data after they've got it, other than whatever way they present it in their master plan where it's appropriate. Whatever data I can get to see, what do people think? Correct. What do they want in town? Yeah. And it's not just, what do these three people want? Correct. That's of, that's where the survey is going to be. Of the 9,000 people, and I don't know if you get 200 responses right. or 500 responses, exactly. whatever number. We then have some data to work with right. and say, because I know some of the towns in, in Connecticut have done this. The big need, people said, was a supermarket or one or two other things. They didn't care about lots of other businesses. They wanted a supermarket in town so they didn't have to go into the next town to buy groceries. So it's just right. This survey is going to really help the town identify what the people want. Right. And they might be surprised to see that they really don't want to see any major development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like blue. I mean, that would really be something if everybody thought that they were going to get blue rhino cheaper cheaper just because they had this on the street you know so yeah what would be nice if if you were a blue rhino and you came to us and we could track against something and things worked the way they needed to we would probably sit down with you and say you know what we don't think it's a good fit for the town correct right and then we'll stop right there that would we'll be perfect right there. yeah mm -hmm. so. that's where the proposed um bylaw that's been approved to be on the as a warrant for the town meeting is going to allow the town to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with the applicant 
prior to the application even being submitted. Right. We're talking. I'm just. Talking so you can see the traffic goal. study now versus three months. Exactly, yeah. and all that data will be delivered right. at that communal meeting. But going to your your comment there, Craig. Oh, it would be ideal. It if would. I could be sitting here right now from Wichita, Kansas, talking to you as the operations manager for Blue Rhino. Yeah. And you simply say. Move on. <laughs> After you've listened. Yeah politely yeah that um thanks but no thanks yeah exactly um, they were turned down in bloomfield recently mm. they went oh, and applied they? to oh, them too okay and they were declined because i asked them you know who else have you been talking to and then um andrew gale asked um was marked in and said that it was in bloomfield and they agreed on the video conference that it was Bloomfield. And the reason why the community said no is because of the wetlands. We've got wetlands there, too. Mm -hmm. But we've got 91 acres. So there's only five or ten, you know, or whatever number of acres of wetlands. Right. Yeah. But uh, Bloomfield's got other issues. Oh, yeah. It's which every, I, every I won't. I, I, I won't. But, yeah, that would be ideal, Craig. Yeah. That's the way it, it should would. happen. It, so, it, I, mean, it I, I agree. But as I say, from the master plan, from the survey, having data, then you can make some decisions. Yeah. Logical decisions. Or you can go to the select board and say, based on the data, X, Y, and Z. It's just up to now, other than the 10-year census data, that apparently nobody else seems to be interested in town other than me, I got the selectman the 10-year data 10, 10 years ago, and then I got it and gave it to them again when it came out in last fall. That gives you an awful lot of data. And it's, it's not just median household income. What percentage of your population is under the age of 18, under the age of five? The schools would know, well, how many kids are coming in the pipeline who haven't gotten here yet? How many people are there over the age of 60? If you're a marketer and you're trying to market to senior citizens, or if you're the senior center saying, right. is our senior population going up or going down? Mm -hmm. There's the data. Mm -hmm. But like with the Blue Rhino, there, to me there's bigger issues. I mean, we're not even taking care of all the sanitary issues in town that we need to, so we're going to give up you know, our, uh, a large portion of what's going down that sewer that we have with Westfield to certain businesses, you know, when we haven't taken care of the rest of the town. So, I mean, to me, there's a lot but, of issues that need to be looked at. Oh, yeah. Regarding the infrastructure. Exactly. Right. Oh, oh, I but what, one of the challenges agree, we had four or five years ago, and Craig's aware of this because he was involved with it, before they rebuilt Cogamon Road, beginning mm -hmm. at Big Y and McDonald's, the road was going to be down to the dirt, and the town said... If the state's paying for this, which they were, other than what I'm going to mention, the town said, let's put in a dry sewer pipe that we can eventually use when the road's down to the dirt. They talked to the residents. The meeting was right in here. I was at the meeting. Mm -hmm. The residents said, if it costs us anything, we're not interested. Maybe with the change in administration, and so this was back in 2015 or 2016, Maybe there'll be more federal money, and the, the Washington will just pay for all of our sewers. I'm sitting there saying, my, 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 this isn't going to happen. This is not the 60s or 70s. No. Hmm. So the pipe never got built. The road got built. It looks nice. It's got a sidewalk on one side, etc. But those people didn't get their sewers. Because they said, in effect, unless it was free or very close to free, they didn't want them. They wanted somebody to provide the sewers to them. The sewers cost a lot of money if you're paying all the, the total cost yourself. And the Department of Public Works, DPW, had, had gotten an agreement with the Department of Agriculture in Washington, USDA, that they'd pay 30 or 40 percent of the cost of the sewer. They wouldn't pay 100 percent, but they'd pay 30 or 40. That wasn't good enough. It had to be 100. I, I just think that 
things could operate right because I, I don't go places where I'm not wanted. You know what I mean? I wouldn't put a business in town and to have everything go through all the motions just because somebody has uh, a big raisin in their head, as the Germans say, is, is foolish. All, to have it come down to a, uh, all the messiness that we saw before. You know, okay. to me there is a, a right way to do things mm -hmm. and, and I, I don't know that it's being done like that. I, to me it's, it's simple how things should occur, you know, um, as we just outlined. You want to do a business in town, here's the Economic Development Commission, here's the bylaws, they'll talk to you about whether or not it's good for the community, if it's a good fit. If it is, then it can move ahead, then they'll right. put you in touch with who you, who right. you need to see next, right. you know. And, uh, that's the way some towns work it, and it does work. But It would be great if we were up front, because then we could say, okay, let's sit down and let's talk to John, the town planner. Right. right. Then let's talk to, they're about to hire a new person for conservation, because mm -hmm. the other person left is working for Westfield. Now let's sit down if there's wetlands or a river or a stream or whatever, what are the limitations or mm -hmm. what are the difficulties there? That makes sense. But the t generally, I don't think the town knows that there's anyone coming until they walk in the s somebody comes to the town planner and says, I want to put in an application. Well, someone's out there advertising our space. So. Well, the the the, the, rea <laughs> the reality, the big companies, they can sit on the internet today and they can find out where the large chunks of land are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 686 College Highway is 91 acres. Mm -hmm. The land behind it is another 20 or 30 acres. You combine the two, which was the Carvana, Carvana proposal. Project. Yep. And you've got road access on College Highway, and you know you've got mm -hmm. whatever. So potentially, you could get someone, but until you straighten out the issue of how you want things zoned in what areas, you tick off half the population. Because people say, "Well, keep it as farm," but if you you own the land, you say, "I'd like to make some money on this," but we don't want housing because we don't want to add any more kids to the schools. But if you read today's newspaper, the school system has gone from 1,800 students down to 1,100 over the last 10 or 15 yeah, years. Well, and even of the 1,100, there's 80 or 100 kids or whatever the number was that are going to tech schools in Agawam or the, the Tech Academy in Westfield because Southwick doesn't offer special program in auto collision repair, hmm. which only serves eight or ten kids, so you're not going to spend right. hundreds of thousands buying equipment right. for the eight or ten kids. Plus but, also a lot of younger couples aren't choosing to, are choosing not to have children. Right. So there's a variety of reasons why right. those demographics right. are the numbers that they are. Or if we're attracting a lot of senior citizens. Mm -hmm. You've got a new company that owns what used to be the American Inn, they've brought in providers who are experienced from Connecticut in how to run housing for older people and they're marketing to that audience mm -hmm. and their marketing is a lot different than marketing of the under the previous owner mm -hmm. it's very in interesting marketing that they're doing on television you see it on channel 40 or channel yeah. 22 mm -hmm. so it just Depends on what your market is and what the population is. That's why I, I say look look at things like census data. It'll give you household income. It'll give you by age what portion of the population is under 18 or over the age of 60 or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to sell a product or service mm -hmm. to that population. Which is something that ultimately the Economic Development Commission would be looking at. Right. Yeah. Right. We look at the, the census data, but we we haven't seen the businesses that we could share that information. If you were coming in here and saying, I represent a client, I work for a real estate development company, I represent a client who's looking at the Springfield area and we're looking at Southwick, then we can talk about 
tax rates. We can talk about the, what percentage of the population is this or that, what the income is. The income for a shopper's food warehouse is different than Trader Joe's or Whole Foods. Just as if you wanted to build, and I don't mean in Southwick or anything, but just an example, a Macy's or a dollar store, it's different demographics. So I don't think that, uh, I, I, I think enough of us here that I don't think we'd be enticed by some sugar daddy or sugar mama coming down the road at the expense of the you know, the, the good will of the town here. I don't think we'd be affected by that. We shouldn't have people on the board that would be. I'm, I'm afraid that many times in this town it's very short-sighted, the decisions that are made, and we have a track record of that, mm -hmm. whether it be sewers or yeah. getting somebody big in here just because they're going to pay for some improvements. Right. So I, I think I think that's the advantage to Economic Development Commission is that we could be that buffer that would uh, be more sensitive to what is best for the town. We have a yeah. personal have the documentation regarding census to back up your exactly. decisions too. Right. We have investment in the town. In my case, it's just my house. Craig's got more than a million dollars worth of property on College Highway mm -hmm. with multiple businesses. Serena has a business and owns real estate in town. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. we're not somebody from Poughkeepsie or somebody from Stanford, Connecticut, just breezing by. We're invested in the we're community. Invested. Well, right. we're not elected to be on this or anything right. either. We're not running right. for office. Right. You know, we're just, Correct. we're here because we care. And I wish we could be more used, you know, in the right way. So, so how can that happen though, Craig? Could it be just going to the select board or to the planning department and say, we demand to be more involved with the development of the town? Why? Well, because I, at an economic level, have we know the, data. After the annual town meeting, when our budget is secured for next year, we can then propose things. I it's think just, we're going to write a letter. We, 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 we talked about that. When, right? when, when yeah. you're on the edge... I understand. And they can take the 600 and make it 200. I, I totally understand. Totally understand. So. So, um, do we have anything else? I think i got to get moving here soon. Yeah. So, uh, anyway. Do you want me to send that to you, Craig? Yeah, if you would. Let me give you a... Uh, I'd like to have it sent to. Okay. It's Serena, S E R E N A, K is in Karen, the number three at AOL.com. You'll get it tonight. Subject line will be as promised. Okay. Okay. I'll Good. Send it to you tonight. Michael, do you want me to send you the one? Um, you put or you I, 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 I can get okay. off the town website. Okay. Okay, so don't forget the art show is Saturday and Sunday. And um, as I say, I've got a hundred of these and 50 of those. So we'll try to promote and beginning July 1st, we can have some things in color and some other things. If they're gonna be right at the table, most people, do they pick them up or do you think you should just put them under their wiper blades? No, I, I, I don't go near people's cars. Okay. Because some people get very upset over that kind of stuff. Because a lot of people, unless you hand them something, they're I, not going to voluntarily know. pick it up. I know. People I've been doing this, this art show for the last 12 or 15 years <laughs> yeah, at know, least. Because right? yeah. my wife's involved with mm -hmm. it. What time is it? 10 to 4? 10 to 4, Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be in the 60s both nice. days. Oh, it's gonna be so nice. a lot of people won't come if they've got Little League or they... Right. They'll come later work on their lawn or whatever so sometimes you you hope for kind of maybe cloudy weather but you don't want it to rain because they won't come out then either so you're trying to find that happy medium in, in between or as this young lady explained to us oh, over the years word. there's some good artists there and some mm -hmm. good artwork or mm -hmm. other types of wood crafts and it has a good drawing it has a good yes. reputation and it's from the whole surrounding area it's not just are they People. serving food or no? Um, the 
Friday night event. Oh, Apparently Friday. we'll have mm -hmm. some minimum, small amount, but there won't be any food on mm -hmm. Saturday or Sunday. Can we adjourn because uh, I want to see some. Yeah, I think we're all set, and uh, it's 7.20 p.m.